great interview for you guys. Richard Becker is joining us. He's running for a state house in Kentucky. Uh, Richard, you're only backed by our revolution, Democracy for America, and Working Families Party. Uh, that's, that's, I, that's it. That's, that's all we got. It. That's all. Uh, and and just Democrats doesn't do state level races, so uh, that means you got almost all of them um, on your side. So uh, so. T uh, what makes you believe that someone as progressive as you can win in the heart of Kentucky? Well, that's a great question. Uh, first of all, Jenk, I want to thank you for having me on here. It's uh, a real honor. Uh, look, you know, we're living in interesting times in Kentucky, just as we are uh, nationwide. Uh, here in Kentucky, we have a, a governor who, uh, if you talk to the voters that I do every day on the doors, is basically a mini Trump. Uh, this is a guy who has repeatedly uh, and aggressively insulted teachers and public employees uh, over the past six months, but really over the course of his term, and has thus uh, not made too many friends uh, in Louisville or elsewhere around the state. You know, when I was in Frankfurt over the past six months uh, advocating for uh, keeping a secure retirement for public employees, uh, I would talk to, to diehard Republicans from some of the most rural parts of the state who said that Governor Bevin has turned them off from the Republican Party for the rest of their life. They're done. Uh, so I think the climate that we're in here with the governor that we have and the legislature uh, that we have, both houses are a Republican majority, uh, you're seeing that folks are, are much more open to progressive ideas. And I think that's why we're going to see uh, some pretty high voter turnout among Democrats on Tuesday. So you're a union organizer, and uh, it says here in your bio that you help the teachers strategize around uh, their response to the pension cuts. Um, so, do you think that that movement in in Kentucky, in particular, uh, wound up moving public sentiment a little bit? I have no doubt about that. I mean, you look at we have thousands upon thousands of teachers in this state. Uh, everyone who lives in this state has been taught by a teacher, and almost everyone has a family member or a close friend or a neighbor who's a teacher. Uh, Governor Bevin picked really a, uh, a pretty terrible fight there, one that I think he thought he could win, but it's quickly turning out that I don't think he's going to when all the uh, votes are counted in November. You know, like I said, we've seen you know diehard Republican teachers turned off by this guy, uh, and so. Um, it's it's created a situation where you know a state that has been trending Republican for the past several election cycles is is looking like it's going to give this Republican governor the boot. And I want to just address uh, what you said about uh, the teachers strategizing for how to respond to this. I don't. Uh, I, I'm not a teacher myself. I'm not affiliated with the teachers unions, but I was approached by several friends of mine, uh, some of whom were teachers, or uh, one of whom uh, has a spouse who's a teacher. And they just asked for the advice of a, a union organizer. The folks that I represent uh, in my, my job uh, are affected by a lot of these pension changes as well. Uh, my union represents nearly 1,000 uh, employees of the Jefferson County Public School System here in Louisville. So I was happy to play a, a very small role in, in, in helping some friends of mine who were wanting to get their friends and their coworkers organized. Yeah, you know, I, I saw some quotes uh, from Kentucky teachers saying, well, I thought that it eventually all the tax cuts and stuff like that were supposed to get to a point where they helped us. It just never got there, right? Mm -hmm. And all right. they ever got was more and more corporate tax cuts and more tax cuts for the rich, and and yet their pensions were getting cut. And so, mm -hmm. and that's happening all across the country. So, one of your priorities uh, on your platform, Richard, is good jobs. Uh, mm -hmm. Flesh that out for me. What does it mean, good jobs in Kentucky? Well, uh, that's another great question. So uh, like many states since the, the Great Recession uh, 10 years ago now, Kentucky has rebounded in a lot of ways economically. But I, I feel like you know, in, in the conversations that I have with folks that are trying to organize a union, uh, as well as voters in my district as I go door to door, you find that a lot of the jobs that have been created in these, these economic recoveries are not necessarily good paying jobs with benefits that allow folks to sustain a family. And so I was uh, proud last fall to be a part of an effort here in Louisville. Uh, we secured uh, what was for Louisville a first of its kind uh, so-called community benefits agreement, which was a deal 
uh, regarding uh, creating living wages uh, for workers in publicly financed projects, in this case, specifically the new Louisville soccer stadium. And I think it's a it's a model that's been used in other states. And, and now that we've kind of broken ground and, and, and tried it here, I think it can be a model across Kentucky. Uh, if I'm elected, I look forward to introducing legislation uh, that would require that any project that uses tax dollars, uses public funds, uh, include guarantees built into it that folks who work on the project and work in the facility once it's built be paid a living wage with benefits. Uh, we need to make sure that the jobs that we're creating are family sustaining jobs, uh, not just seven twenty five an hour minimum wage jobs. All right, Richard, I've said that I'm going to ask you super random questions. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, where'd you go to college? Uh, I went to the University of Kentucky. Okay, and uh, what did your parents do for a living? Uh, so my father uh, is a, a chemist, um, a PhD chemist, and, and my mother uh, was um, a small business owner, um, ran a, a coffee shop, a local coffee shop, and, and uh, worked in, in real estate for a time. Uh, but uh, they're both retired now, living here in Louisville. Okay, I, I was going to guess teacher for one of them, but <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, we've all been been uh, had great interactions with teachers, and there are any number of teachers that I can uh, thank for why I'm sitting here with you today. So right. Um, so all right, uh, one more question about policy. Uh, yeah. You've got human rights and a more equal Kentucky on one of your priorities. Um, yeah. What does that mean for you? Well, there's a couple things that I'll highlight uh, as a part of that. Number one, Kentucky is uh, a state that still uh, allows for any number of kinds of discrimination against folks uh, because of their sexual orientation or their gender identity. Uh, we have we've had legislators who, for years, have been introducing a statewide fairness law that would enshrine in the Kentucky Civil Rights Act protections for LG, LGBTQ folks. Um, and unfortunately, under uh, Republican leadership, that sort of legislation hasn't stood a chance. And so cities have started passing fairness ordinances, um, Louisville being one of them, uh, that, that protect folks in those cities. And we continue to have conversations in this Republican legislature about uh, prohibiting that practice, prohibiting cities from passing their own fairness ordinances. So we need a, a statewide fairness statute that, that enshrines protections for LGBTQ folks. The other thing is, and I, this is something that, that I think your uh, viewers might find interesting, Kentucky is one of just a handful of states that does not automatically uh, provide a pathway to for formerly incarcerated folks uh, to have their voting rights reinstated. Uh, this is another piece of legislation that comes up every single year in the Kentucky legislature and always ends up getting uh, squashed by Republicans in the legislature. It's time that Kentucky enter the 21st century and join the overwhelming majority of states that reinstates voting rights to folks who are incarcerated and have served their time. All right, uh, and and by the way, uh, Richard's in a in a blue part of Kentucky, so yeah. the yeah. primary is the most important thing, and that's happening next week, right? Next Tuesday, Tuesday, May 22nd. Yes, and uh, we'll be covering that, so we'll update you on Richard's race. Uh, but if you're going to help Richard, this is definitely the time. Because the primary in this case is more important than the general election. So BeckerForKentucky.com is the website. You've got the uh, links to donate and volunteer. And if you're watching later on YouTube or Facebook, uh, you will uh, be able to click on those really easy in the description box. Uh, Richard Becker, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jank. Keep up the good work. <laughs>